All right, hi everyone. Uh, ugh, I gotta love technology. Technology is always great. See the chat's already active, which is wonderful. So I'm gonna say hello. We have uh, Scratch Bashing, Raven, Two Guns Painting, Totopotamus. I love that name, by the way, as well as Charles, Rollins, and Jordan. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, jumping in and visiting. Uh, let me know if the music is too loud. I can toggle that down to make it a little bit softer for you. But today I'm picking back up with the WizKids miniatures that I had been working on in the previous live stream. Let me just, that's actually loud for me. Here we go. And oh, King John just joined us from the Panhandle of Texas. Howdy. And we have Tyne joining us somewhere in the evening. So I'm guessing you're across the pond and over in Europe somewhere. Always love finding out where. So basically what happened is I worked on the WizKids desk and chair set, which are these two pieces right here. Uh, they did get their wash. Instead of doing the Agrax Earthshade from Citadel, I did go with the Seraphim Sepia instead. Uh, so that's what these guys got done. And I also realized this was all wood too. So I figured since I'm gonna be giving it the same treatment as I gave the desk and the chair, basically got this one set and painted and ready to go as well. So that's all going to get addressed today in terms of the last two steps that I want to do to them to get them to look like the desk and chair from um, the other company, that I'm, uh, Tiny Furniture, that I showed you last week since so many people asked how I did that. And then I also managed to get to those itty bitty, bitty bitty little bottles. And these guys, I'm quite happy with how they came out too. So these are the ones where I put the color in first with nail polish and use like just different kinds with different styles. And then I went back over with the two different washes from Citadel. I used the Beale Green as well as the Agrax Earthshade in this case. So the ones that have more of the brown tone, those are the ones that got the Agrax. The ones with the green, those are the ones that got the Beale Green. And it actually gave me some really... They're so tiny, the camera's like, what are you doing, woman? Um, they really came out looking like a mix of different glass bottles. So I'm very happy with how that works. So that's the one bunch. And then the, here's the other bunch that I got to as well. So these guys, they got the nail polish during the stream and then they got the washes after the stream was done. And I'm really pleased with how those came out. And these are gonna get glued to the desk and a couple of the other accessories that I have planned for um, this particular study. Oh, we are active today in the chat. This is nice. Hello, Robert from Washington. Very, very, very nice. And we have Belgian. Oh, and Norway. See, this is why I like doing this time of day. We get a lot of people who are able to jump in from uh, Europe. And I know it's tough, especially with the um, streams that I do, because those are late at night, even on my time. So, oh, in Australia. Okay, this is cool. This is like nice and international. So, <laughs> I'm so easy to please. I'm so easy to please. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is address these three pieces and get things moving. Hello, Nathan. And hello, Jan. Nice to have you jump in too. And Tommy, I don't know if I got you yet. So hello to you as well. So what I'm going to do is next step, I'm going to do some dry brushing. And this is with the Vallejo Game Color line. And I'm going to be using Parasite Brown, which, you know, lovely name. Their names always crack me up. But this is the one I'm going to be putting as a dry brush over. And again, we're working with warm browns because I'm making this a warmer color of wood, which was established last week. And uh, if you are interested in any of these accessories from WizKids, I did put the links for them in the description below so you can go and purchase them. So do be sure to check out the description for that. So starting with the Parasite Brown, <laughs> I'm gonna go back in and basically highlight with my brush all those great details. And I'm actually gonna jump it down to a smaller flathead style brush to do all this. And then let me just bring this up here so you can see what I mean. So you can see they have some really fantastic wood grain details already put into the mini, which, mm, hello, love it. And I'm just going to bring these back out a little bit more because like with any wash, it tends to mute the colors down just a little bit. But it did keep those warm tones as I had hoped, which is great. That's also why I decided to use the Seraphim uh, Sepia instead, because that's a warmer brown than the Agrax. The Agrax, I realized, was probably going to be a bit too cool and a bit too dark. So I'm just going to go in and I'll start with the back so you can see. Uh, how are you going to separate them from the handle without totally marring the paint? Well, the fun tack is good for that. And you actually just heat it up with your, I'm not going to do it now. If I do it now, I'm not going to be able to stick it back on. Heat up your fun tack with just a little bit of uh, like a hairdryer or something, and it makes it more malleable and it comes right off. I have yet to have it pull paint off on me. Um, I also just basically did a black finish on the bottom of the desk so that it's one of those things where you're not going to see the bottom. There's no need to go crazy with the bottom. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how. And you just make sure you're really careful about not having the blue tack lip up and over. 
So hopefully that answers your question as to how I do that. Now I always test on my hand here before going in with a brush because I don't want to super load this up. This is literally just to bring out the details and I'm just going to start dragging it across with that Parasite Brown. In this I am going a little bit more light handed. I don't want this to be a huge drastic jump. I just want to bring more of that warmth back up again. So that is the when dry brushing paper towel or washcloth. Mm, and not quite. <laughs> I use my hand. I've always done that. Uh, sometimes I'll use paper towel for like the bigger pieces like terrain, but that's what I do. Hello, Mia. Nice to see you. Yeah, I love WizKids too. They are fantastic. Um, they're really great. If I see something, they'll send it along its way so I can get it painted up. So good company. Thumbs up to them. And they have some really fun things going on right now. Um, I'm going to be doing an article about their Wardlings line. I don't know if you've seen these yet, but they are really, it's a really cool line. It's a really great concept. And um, Bexham's Bazaar. I try and write an article. Article. I can articulate. And I'm looking at uh, focusing it on getting kids into the action of playing games. And these Wardlings are right up that alley, which, hello, that is totally something I want to do. So they sent me, I have all the waves now, and I love what they're doing with them. It's really cool stuff. So keep an eye out for that one. Not not the March to uh, April issue, I believe, is when I'll be able to get that article in. So yeah, that's on my, that's on my growing to-do list as well. Okay, so that just brings the warmth back up again, as you can see right there. And I'm just going to keep going around and getting the other sides of this done with the Parasite Brown. And then I will do this to the other pieces as well to get everyone ready to go. And I have started doing other builds and I'm even making a few miniatures for the whole BB's Place game for the castle. Um, which I can't believe we're already in March, which means June's around the corner. So yeah, I'm going to be busy, but definitely trying to capture what I can for uh, videos and I'll do some things on the live stream as well for it. So hopefully everyone enjoys what's coming around. Hand is best. Paper towel can sometimes make it grainy, I find. Yeah, I just find sometimes the paper towels absorb the paint too, so you're not seeing how it's reacting to texture, and your hands obviously have their own natural texture, which is why I default to my hand. Um, and there are other artists who do it too, and I've, I've seen a few where people post on Instagram, but like it starts up here and it goes down the arm, which cracks me up uh, because it's one of those things where I'm like, yep, yeah, so guilty. I am so guilty, but... It's what I do. It's what I do and it's what works best for me. Uh, but like I said, for terrain, that's really more... God, if I did terrain, I just might as well use body paint in that respect. Get back in frame here. And uh, yeah, so for miniatures, I definitely default to just kind of <laughs> using my hand. <sighs> you can totally jump in if you want to or just lurk. I don't... Honestly, I don't mind. If lurkers are there just having fun and enjoying the, the show, so to speak, that's fine. Pipe up if you want to, sit back and relax if you want to. I'm good with either or, really, honestly and truly. Yeah, definitely check it out, Nathan, because I think I think you'd like it. Um, there's three waves, like I said, and I'll be taking pictures of them and everything, too, for this article I'm doing because of how much the kids have responded to it. I even used uh, a few of the minis for the birthday party game that I ran for my older son, and his buddies got such a kick out of picking out their mini and deciding what their character is going to be like based off the mini. It's a good um, impetus to get them thinking and moving forward with it all. So, hence why I like them. Uh, now, always with the dry brushing, you want to make sure you're pulling with wood against the grain. If you go with the grain, you're going to start filling in those lovely deeper pieces, which you don't want to do, which is why you'll see me kind of flip this around every so often. And then... Once these are dry, which is why I'm doing all three pieces at once, because by the time I get to the last piece, this will be ready for the next round. Uh, there is one last step I do to really highlight those edges that I like. Hey, Jody, how are you today? Thanks for stopping by. This, this is always the tricky one. Here we go. Because this is deeper in the desk, I'm not going to be as worried about making sure I get as much going on in there, because it's obviously recessed. It's going to be slightly darker but it's starting to bring in that little pop of color. 
bringing that warmth back up. Because like I said, washes are great, but they do tend to kind of bring the colors a little bit down again. Which, that's okay. Serves the one purpose, which means you go to the next one. But this is exactly what I did with that other desk that everyone really responded to and wanted to know how I did it. So you too can recreate the look, theoretically, if you so choose. But yeah, I have a whole bunch of minis I need to start working on too. I'm going to be doing a lot of kit bashing. And uh, I'm actually using some Hero Clicks minis, and a few of them are definitely going to need like full repaints without question, just because I want to change the look of the mini in of itself. Green stuff's definitely going to get put to use. So I like this shot because you can see this is without the dry brushing that's with. You can just see it just, just lightens it up just slightly. Nothing drastic. But yeah, that'll be... That'll be something where a couple I'll do on the live stream, I'm thinking, just to kind of show you how to enhance a little bit without going crazy. Uh, Pre-painted minis. Because there's times where you just, well, don't have the time. And I find that some pre-painted minis you can easily adjust and work to do what you need them to be without as much time and effort. Uh, you know, sometimes a half hour is all you need to kind of just amp them up a little bit enough for the table. Whereas others, you know, yeah, you're going to be sitting there painting it by hand <laughs> a little bit longer. So that's something that'll come down the line. And next week, I already know that I want to paint these great minis that um, Miguel Zavala designed for me. Which, uh, MZ4250 over on Thingiverse and Shapeways. He does fantastic uh, files for 3D prints. And I have these two very unique NPCs that I know are not really out there. So he designed them up for me. And I was quite happy with them. And they are my uh, Creole crocodile people. So I'll show them to you at the end of this, this stream so you can see what they look like. But those are who are going to be getting painted next week. I'm going to get as far as I can with these miniatures. Uh, but it's getting to the point where I need to make sure I keep pushing along. Because I don't want to get behind. But here we go. Alright, so this is desk. All ready and set to go with the dry brush. And I'm going to go and do the chair, as well as the podium. And then we'll switch over to just highlighting those edges with a little trick I like to do for those. And yeah, definitely. Haha. <laughs> I'm covered in parasites. The chair is going to take no time at all because it's so small. But I do like the details they have going on for these minis. Even with the bottles. The bottles have some fun details that popped out more once they got... Um, their washes on them too so you know if you're looking for fun accessories for like your wizard study or a library or whatever these these fit the bill nicely are the new plaid products out yes yes uh, as of March 4th the plaid ultra is released I did put the link in last streams description so if you want to backtrack to that you can very easily get those and uh, purchase them and it comes in the gloss as well as the matte but they are now available to the general public <laughs> yeah the discord server you guys don't lurk yes i do have the discord server going and it's up and running i have some chats for the public and i also have some more exclusive chats for my patrons where i do need to make sure i jump on today because we got to talk about our uh monthly chat that I try and do with my patrons and figure out a day that would work for people. And I do try to vary it summer in the evening, summer during the day, because I know everyone has different time zones to work with. And we'll just take it from there. But that's, oh, I got to remember to do that. Note to self. Let's see. Thoughts on Reapers plastic versus WizKids plastics, difference in the way they paint. Um... Oh, King John, I will take a look at that. I did not... My notifications have been off from... Like, not physically off. Like, not working properly. Ever since my phone had that update from hell. Uh, so, thank you for letting me know. I will make sure to go over and look at that this afternoon. And uh, check out your application. Uh, in terms of Reaper and WizKids... Um, sometimes Reaper has the habit of being a little bit more... Wobbly. <laughs> I find those miniatures tend to come sometimes more bent out of shape, literally, and they need a little bit more TLC with the um, hot water, cold water treatment. Um, in terms of paint, 
Uh, honestly, that tends to vary from mini to mini. WizKids has definitely gotten a lot better with the Vallejo pre-prime stuff in their more recent minis, so I'm finding those are painting a lot better now. Uh, but, I mean, we're going to have the new Reaper Kickstarter, hopefully, coming our way in a little bit, and I think that's going to give me a better better gauge of how they're doing lately, because I haven't bought from Reaper in a while, because we still have such a... God, such a backlog of minis. <laughs> The chair looks like when you just print it. That's pretty funny. All right, so the chair is done for now with getting the dry brushing on. And now we're going to do the podium. The podium's really cool. This one I didn't really show off too much on the last stream, but it's got some nice engraved factors going on there just to kind of... It actually reminds me of a podium one of my teachers had in school. So I'm cracking up as I was looking. I'm like, this is like Mrs. So-and-so's. So same idea here. I'm just going to go through, get that all dry brushed. I do need a little bit more paint, though. Yeah, we're also, um, Thingiverse has been very nice to me because I've been looking for uh, more miniatures and stuff for my game, and I found some really, really cool uh, kegs and barrels and sort of like wine cellar type of prints, because the basement of the uh, speakeasy is like a wine cellar brewery type of thing, for obvious reasons, and it's just going to be fun to have scatter to put to use that'll enhance that, so I'm looking forward to that. Now the trick here is this one has like this recess thing going on. There we go. This one has a lot of different directions going on here. But it'll be fun to uh, do the edge highlighting because of it. So yeah, we're kind of blending it all together. Uh, yes, it's gotten two guns. It, the primer has definitely gotten a lot better since its original go around with doing the pre-prime stuff. And that was something Liz Kids was fully aware of too. I, I had spoken with Justin about that back in Origins 2018 and it was something they were working on then. And you can tell it's definitely gotten so much better and a lot easier to work with. Like these guys were the pre-primed. I didn't have to worry about, mm, I might need to strip these. Mm -mm. No, they were from the box. I always wash them. It was from the box into the soapy water and then paint is really how these worked for me. So yeah, they've, they've gotten a lot better. Um, and I know what you're talking about because I've had it with a couple of their older versions too. Um, and again, this is something they knew was going on and they were working on fixing where it was almost like it got sprayed with stucco is the best way to describe the texture when a few of them got out of the box. So hopefully you have good memories of Mrs. So-and-so. <laughs> yes, she was one of the nice ones. She wasn't one of the nuns. <laughs> Some of those nuns, I tell you. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah, this side. So, yeah, they've they've gotten a lot better. They've come a long way. And uh, I have no problem saying, yeah, go and grab one of their pre, pre-primed pre minis because it's definitely very nice to be able to just grab and paint and go. Well, hello, Vincent. Not here, you're incognito. Nice try. <laughs> Sneaks and sneakily. Oh, God. And then I did get a... <laughs> the camera saga. I gotta tell you, this, this camera stuff is interesting because what happened was is right after the stream, thank you very much to Chameleon Fam and to Vincent, you guys helped me get a new camera. I went over to order a new camera and the one I wanted to get was sold out on Amazon and knowing that I needed it for the streams because OBS won't let me differentiate well between my two C920s, or not C920s, but Logitech 920s. And uh, so yeah, I, I was like, all right, let me see if I can find this elsewhere to purchase. And I thought I did find a place to purchase it elsewhere. Uh, and turns out the seller was very much a fly-by-night style where they sent me, not even was it not the right camera, it was a downgrade of the camera and it was very much used even though it wasn't labeled as used. Not a happy muse, let's put it that way. Uh, luckily, the uh, website from which I purchased it, they were willing to step in and pretty much we bypassed the third party seller and they refunded me because it's not the level of camera that I need. But I am uh, working with someone where I'm gonna send this over to her so that she can uh, put it to use. I just wanted to test run it for her. So this is, this is the new temporary camera, but it's not staying around because it doesn't get to the uh, level that I need for definition. And uh, yeah, so 
ironically, when I was just quickly looking at Amazon to see if maybe by chance, perhaps the camera I wanted was back in stock, it was, but it gets here tonight at like 5 p.m. Fra. Hi, Mike McDonald. What's up with you? So, so yes, there, there, there's been a little drama, llama drama with the cameras, but it's, it's getting there. We're getting closer to resolved, thankfully. It's just one of those things you're like, are you kidding me? It's like between not even being the right model, they're also trying to say, no, it, you know, we didn't say it wasn't, we, we put down that it wasn't brand new. It's like, no, you really, you did not have any of that in the listing. You're not going to work with me. I'm going to bypass you. I don't even have the time for it, quite frankly. It's like, nope, you're being difficult. I love to like, well, you can keep the camera. We'll give you $5 back. I'm like, no, because this isn't a new camera and you charge me new camera prices. Me no like. All right. So Podium has the dry brushing going on as well. I said, like, I love it. It's just this little fun little details there. Those little touches always get me giddy. Now it does have, and this is a cool thing. It has this and it's actually a functional one. Like you can put books and stuff in here. So yay for that. I will definitely be doing that. But um, I'm not going to bother making myself nuts and dry brushing in there. There's really no need to. Uh, but all right. So let's check and see. The desk should be, it is. Desk is ready now. Let me rinse my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump over to bone white. And this is what I do to sort of bring out the edges uh, and really make them pop, but also give them that nice worn wood look, not worm wood. That's a completely different story. Worn wood. Eating food. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that after this is done because I totally forgot to um, grab a bite to eat. Oops. So if you hear growling, that's my tummy. That's my tummy saying you forgot to get food, which I do way too often. But, you know, running around busy. I got things to do. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, yeah, I'm going to jump over to using bone white. And this is going to be a very, 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 very light-handed touch with this. And you think my hand looks silly now. Wait till I get the bone. Actually, I'll put the bone white back on. It's going to look like my hand again. <laughs> okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to get my brush dipped in the bone white. And I'm really, I'm not even loading it up too much. I'm getting just enough paint on so that, oh, did I rinse this? I didn't rinse this off enough. Hold on. That's why it's doing that. I'm like, why is it coming out orange? Shh, shh. Don't mess with the muse. She's got a dedicated fan base. Boy, howdy. That would be funny to email them back. Don't make me sick my subs on you. But honestly, the um, the big company who helped me out because the third party seller was not being understanding at all. The second I said, look, this is this is for my, you know, my channel. I stream. This is something that was quite necessary. They completely took over. They were a huge help. They were nothing but professional and quick and prompt and... Thank goodness for that, because that changed the whole game. Ah, yes, I, I love how you're like, yeah, not, not happening, not cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having my back. You're awesome, too. So what I'm going to do with this bone white, and my brush barely has any on it at this point, I'm literally just going to drag this up on just the edge of the desk. And it's very light. I'm, I'm barely even touching the desk itself. And this starts giving that more worn edge look. Because, I mean, if you have wooden furniture, you know after a while it starts getting not not dinged up. Well, yeah, a little bit dinged up. But the uh, finishes on the corners and the edges tends to soften. So this helps give that effect as well. It also helps it kind of pop a little bit more in definition. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to all of the edge zones and just lightly putting this bone white and because you don't need that much to get that effect you're going to find you're not having to load your brush up too much to get this look and it's always better to put a little bit on first and go back than to try and overload because then you're just going to have this weird racing stripe on your desk and furnitures furnitures furniture pieces is what i was thinking and i said furnitures instead how the brain works, I tell you. But yeah, this is uh, this is my little little step that I've started doing with furniture because I really like what it does in the effects department. Isn't it amazing what a little extra touch will do? But see, now you're getting the whole look to it. 
and it really just makes those edges come out more, which I love. Oop, I gotta get right here, because that kind of has a little lip there. So I'm gonna just take this here and bring out that little corner bit. See, you didn't even realize that was there until I did that. Isn't that cool? Hello, Matt. Thanks for jumping in. Oh, I do have a Dextral Strength Mod Podge. That's a heavy bottle. Don't make me use my Mod Podge on you. I am gonna go back in and put a little bit more bone white on now. But you can see I'm basically brushing it out so it almost doesn't even show up on my, <laughs> it blends into my hand. <laughs> there you go, I'll call the makeup companies. Yeah, I need a foundation that matches bone white from Vallejo. Can you work on that for me? That would be hysterical. What's my color? This is my color match. Yuck, yuck, yuck. But yep, very simple, surprisingly easy, super effective, which I like. But now you're getting all these really cool edges popping up and showing up. I am going to for the doors as well, pull down from the top because those would be the areas that would probably get the most wear on them. I do need to get a little bit more of the paint on. And I am going to go back and do the handles with, um, oh, what's it called? Tinny Tin for the metallic look, which I will do once I know all this is nice and dry. But Okay, this one's almost done. I just have to get the back sides of it. So back through here, and then I'll jump over to the other pieces so you can see how that also translates onto different forms and everything like that. Once again, just super light. It doesn't need a whole bunch to get the look, which is helpful. So that's the one thing I stress. If you're going to do this, don't go overboard. And there are some people I know who say um, you can use, like, do this with white armor. You, you can get away with it because of the whole shine factor. Uh, but I wouldn't do it with wood because it's too stark. It's much too stark of a contrast. The bone white, again, we're talking about warm tones. The bone white has that warm tone, so it blends a lot better. And it doesn't look as harsh of a transition. I think I'm also going to change up the playlist for the next uh, live stream. i got to go look at Techno X and see what else he has going. So if you have any music style requests, because normally I tend to do like deep house stuff just because it's more chill. Nice flesh tone there, V. It's your skin. Yep. That, that would be it me. <laughs> It totally me. <laughs> it's so scarily me. It's funny at this point. Okay. Just one more edge here to go. And then this side. And the same thing like I did with the doors. Just sort of, yeah, keep it in frame, lady. And then just put it around the bottom too. Not too crazy. But that takes care of the edging around our desk. So the desk is now, this is what I'm going to call done for the desk. Outside of, I will seal it with the, hold on. Ouch. Just bang my, this is the Mod Podge Ultra. This is what came out two days ago. And I live. Uh, the gloss on this is just superb. It definitely looks like a varnish on the wood. So I'm going to be sealing this. I'm going to do a paintbrush method. Even though it has a nice spray and it sprays beautifully for this. Uh, it's going to be a... Uh, dip my brush in type of situation so I get a smooth finish and everything like that. So that's the desk. Let's move over to the chair and give the chair the same treatment. How are we doing on time? Oh, perfect. But as you can sort of see, I've just been brushing it off on my hand and it barely shows up. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's the story of my life. Now with this one, I definitely want to highlight the curvatures on this chair. So I'm going to go through and just get the edges there. I don't want to go ham with this color. That's not necessary. But I do want to give the edges a little touch of this because it will bring it out more. I've also been a total klutz this week. I don't know, don't know what I did, but somehow I got the side of my hand cut up. I think it was... Um, 
breaking down some cardboard for a different project and I got like a wicked paper cut. But oh my gosh, my hands are beat up today. I was looking at it's like, I don't know what I did, but I'm not being nice to my skin. Now with the chair, it's a little bit more tricky because it's smaller. So just hover that brush over and kind of let the paint do the work for you. I'm actually going to for the medallion. There we go. But it just brings out the edging a little bit more here. Yoink. Oh, come on, play nice. And it's, uh, you know, one of those things where you could feasibly leave this step if it's not something you're comfortable with. But I have found in the long run, it's totally worth it just because of the impact it creates by having those edges brought out more. So that's that's my two cents on if you want to do this. I definitely find it worth doing. This chair is so small though it's hard to get its details to pop and show on the camera. It's showing nicely for me. For me! Not so much for the camera. Let's get right here. And then up here. And down the arm rest. And we'll get through here. But yeah, just uh Shift around. I'm going to do the same thing to the medallion and kind of give that a little extra oomph. Oh, got to get the bottom there. So basically where your edges are. Oh, there we go. Where your edges are, that's where you want to put that bone white. And I'll take pictures of these, obviously, when they're all done. So chair is done. <laughs> not order any of that new stuff. I will not order any of that new stuff. Okay. <laughs> I was actually teasing someone else the other day. She, uh, Lisa Chen, she's going to be at uh, the castle too. She posted these really cool mini spell books. Well, not mini, but uh, little spell books for cards, like to hold spell cards. And they were so damn adorable. You know something's cute if I'm like clenching my jaw. They were really cute looking. And I told him like, you are a bad influence on my wallet because I would have in a heartbeat have gotten one of those. But then it's also like, I'm sitting, I'm like, yeah, but I also just made myself my own little notebook for spell cards. So kind of don't need it. Just really loved the concept. It was a great one. It really was. Uh, so yeah, I totally get it. When you have that person who's really good about sharing things that look awesome. Mm hmm. So same thing with the podium. Just getting those edges picked up with the bone white. Hmm. Let me see here. I think I can. Yeah. I am going to put a little bit of it onto, because the scroll work is slightly raised. And that, I just wanted to put a little bit on there. It's kind of, uh, you're going to play nice with me on the, a little bit there. You can see it just to kind of pop that more. So yeah, this is basically how I did the uh, desk and chair from before. And now I have two lovely desks and two lovely chairs to use which I am quite happy about. Get the edges, get the edges. I want to say something silly, like take the edge off. But you know, ha ha. This is where it's a little bit tricky for the podium because it has all these, it has a lot of edges in the, not the base, what is this? Well, I guess it's its base. So I'm just going back and forth with the brush to kind of get those edges on both sides, both the insets and the exterior edges, but it definitely makes a difference to show it off. Really cool details, which makes it lovely, lovely to put to use. I am curious for when we get our uh, Reapers Kickstarter stuff, go through it and see what I'm going to bring with me to uh, the castle. Because I definitely want to pick out some stuff for baddies. This one also has a little bit of... There we go. It's just exciting. Anytime you get something new, 
be it dice, be it minis, be it module. <laughs> I'm actually excited for this game. I'm going to be jumping into, um, it's a very cool concept. And once I get more details on it, I will share information with you. But it's uh, looking more like just sort of starting out literally like your PC, just starting out fresh completely. And you build your abilities as you play. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that one, no pun intended, plays out. It just sounded like a really, really cool concept. So that's a project on the horizon I'm looking forward to. And then if you aren't following me on Twitter, why aren't you? Uh, I did post on my Facebook page too. I did this really fun interview with Dan from the Lonely Havocs. And it was a really fun podcast interview. So if you want to catch that, he had some really good questions. Like he sets it up like a 20 question type thing. But the question he asks are um, a blend of like total, total silly, almost irreverent ones. And then some really good thought provoking ones. So if you want to check that out, do check my Facebook page or my Twitter account, because I did make sure to share them there. But it was a lot of fun to do with him. And it was, uh, it was one of those things, I think we chatted for like two and a half hours and it did not feel that way. So I was impressed that he brought it down to like 50 minutes. <laughs> but he still got the uh, meat and potatoes of it, so to speak. So yeah, this one has a lot of edging going on, which is why I'm still working on it. But I'm almost done with it. And then we'll move on to the cauldron. Because I really wanted to get the cauldron done. That looks like a fun one to attack. Alright, and that takes care of the podium. So you can see it's just bringing out those edges more. Which is why I like doing this little step. So, he's also done. Yay! I was like, oh, I'll show you how I paint the books. But I will show you just really quick on one of the sets what I do and then explain things but there are a lot of book stacks and that's going to get a little tedious to watch <laughs> but what I do want to jump into now is this fun cauldron but it has this neat embossed right because it goes up um, that I want to bring out more so this is primed already in black uh, even though yes it was pre-primed I painted it black because I knew I wanted the cauldron in black and I did get a couple little pieces up here, but I'm going to go back and fix that. Usually it's just a little bit of nail polish remover does the trick to get that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in to highlight this more and bring out those shapes because it's just a really neat detail. But I'm going to use a dark gray and mix in a little bit of black, which I thought I grabbed. I guess not. Here we go. Here's some black. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to using somber gray from the same Vallejo color game color line. And I'm going to mix in just a couple little touches of black so it's not, because this still shows up as a gray. Um, but I don't want it to be so gray that it looks too stark between each other. So I'm going to put the gray in first and then a drop of black. And then what I'm going to do is just mix it up. And I did have a little, where am I? Here it is. My little mixer. It's easier to add more black as you go along than to put too much in and try and lighten it up because that's where it gets fun. All right, it definitely needs another drop. I just said a drop, not a bubble. There we go. Mix that up more. There we go. Okay, that's more along the lines of what I had in mind. So I'm going to go in with this darkened somber gray, and that was two drops of the black. I'm also going to clean my brush from the bone white because that's going to counteract what I just did. <laughs> and I'm going to go through and I'm going to dry brush the cauldron to bring out the really cool details because I don't want to do too much to it. What I'm going to do is the dry brush and then actually do a wash in the Nuln oil so it brings things more down to a blackish appearance, but you'll still get, because it's really cool. It says dude, he's got like horns and a mustache and pointy ears, which I love. Uh, let's see. Uh, ordering the new stuff for sure. <laughs> there you go, Nathan. Anyone got ideas on how to get deeply embedded splinter out of the sole of your foot? Yes, uh, what you want to do is make a paste out of baking soda, put it onto the wound, and cover it with a Band-Aid, and that usually helps draw out the splinter. Said the mom with two little boys who are very good about getting splinters on their bodies. Okay, so, uh, you know what? Let me put him on. I'm going to take the bottles off. 
which, man, these clear tabs are sticky. Terrain Kate Kickstarter. No, I did not see this Jedi Jim. Oh, that would have, I might be looking at something soon. I'm definitely gonna have to take a look at that one. Whiskey and a craft knife and gangrene. <laughs> okay, so like I said, there are these really cool details here, which are you not gonna stick for me now? Here we go. I'm just gonna go over. Yeah, I don't know, this this guy, I don't think it's gonna hold it because this is a pretty, problem it's a heavy piece, but it has very small connection points because of the uh, claw feet on the base. So right now I'm just going over the raised portions to bring this out more, as you can see. So here we have with the dry brush, without. It does make a difference. So this is gonna get the dry brush treatment. You know, I might just hold it between my fingers like this. And then I'll go back in with a Nolan oil so it won't read so gray as much as it will a lighter, lighter black. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> For drinking and sterilization. <laughs> Something like that. Forget the pain. But I'm just gonna go through this whole piece and basically give it that treatment so that way the details are drawn out and I just went way too ham in the paint by dipping my brush too far. And again, just these more higher up details, so to speak. It does have these ears that I wanna get. But this is gonna help give the cauldron a lot more depth and interest so it doesn't look as flat as it did with just painting it black. Bam, 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 bam. And uh, who was it last week that was talking about using the color shifts? I am gonna do the color shift paint on this. I tried it out on one of the bottles and they're so small, nothing happened. Like it didn't translate at all. But this has a little bit more surface uh, space. So I'm gonna try doing it on the, uh, the bubbly stuff. I'm just debating which color I want to use. I think I might just go for the green because, you know, just that creepy, acidic looking green, I think would be a neat contrast to the dark black of the cauldron. He is looking at you, kid. It's just such a cool detail. Only 26 hours left, so check it out if you think it might be of interest. Thank you, Jedi Jim. I very much appreciate the heads up on that one. Um, because a lot of what I'm making right now is driven by the fact we don't really have anything more modern build based. I mean, stuff like for the library and whatever, well, libraries don't tend to change that much style wise, which is helpful. But yeah, for the uh, general area of like the uh, speakeasy zones, I'm definitely working on creating more terrain for it than I normally would need to have done before based on our own collection. So I will definitely give that a look. Look at that. Now you can see the fun details. All right, let me get the, 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 the clawed feet. And again, this is just that somber gray with a little touch of black. Sort of a lighter shade of pale, a lighter shade of black. Man, I have a lot of things to do now. I'm going to have to go back and watch this to remind myself as to what my to-do list has become just by chatting with all of you. <laughs> Oh God, that's always the fun part. Going back and be like, now what did I say I put a link into and make sure the links get in there. I really do try and remember to get that done. I'll uh, finish up here and then I'll put this, not on rewind, but I go and I watch it on YouTube just to check the quality and everything and how it was doing. Cause a lot of times that'll dictate my settings for next time. And then uh, it helps me figure out what else needs to be tossed in. All right, so here you go, now you can see all those details so much better. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and I'm gonna do the Nuln oil, but I'm gonna do it so it's, pardon me, sitting upside down. I'm trying not to, <clears throat> it's not gonna happen. I gotta take a drink of water. So uh, we'll get that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the uh, scrying bowl. <laughs> uh, so it also brings out, cause that has really cool details on it too. Let me just take a quick sip. I'm only human, I need a drink. Not that kind of drink, at least not yet. It hasn't been that kind of a day yet. <laughs> oh 
Oh my gosh. But I'm excited for tomorrow night. More Dawnbringers. God, I love, I love that game. That game is just so much fun to be a player on. And uh, we had a lot of fun last week. Jake has it set up when one of us is out and can't make it. And Scotty can't make it right now because he's visiting family, which huzzah for that. Um, he does this alternate reality. And we just had such fun sort of altering and adjusting our characters accordingly. Now I am putting more on this because I'm giving this more of a stone look. So this is getting a lot more of the dry brushing uh, with the mix of somber gray and black. Those are the words I was looking for, as opposed to what I done. Like the cauldron was very light. This is definitely getting more of the bring it up to a stone gray instead. Because I want to bring out that. I love those details. But yeah, I'm having such fun. And I like my bard a lot. Actually, I love Cantriel. I'm, I'm very attached to that PC. God help me. Here we go. Just moving it up. So what I'll do is I'll do the somber gray and black mix. This will also get the wash, the wash, a wash, but I might actually do Agrax instead of the Nuln oil. And then I'll go back in with, I think it is just tan, is the name of the color that I wanna use. Oh, we're talking about the mix, hold on, let me backtrack. What we need is a Mimic Cauldron. Well, we have the Mimic Keg and the Mimic Chest and what was I just looking at that had a really cool mimic in it? The Tome of Beasts from Cobalt Press. What was it, though? It was one of those mimics I was like, you know, story-wise, that could also work. I might have to go back and look at that one again. Mimic Tavern. You don't know until you're in it. Oh, God. Uh, well, there's that joke. It's... uh. Like walking into the bar, the bartender laughed, I laughed, the bar laughed, I killed the bar, or the bar, not the bard, the bar, something like that. It's a meme, it floats around every so often, you'll see it. That's what that comment reminds me of. That was my whole point. That was the whole point of that little tidbit I just said. <laughs> I think I'm in it now. Hick. Oh dear. Oh dear. So yep, still going around. And again, I'm putting more on intentionally because I want this to look more gray than black. That is the point. Pardon me while I work it, work it, work the paint around. But these details are such fun. Look at all that. Even underneath you have these great little touches, which that always wins me over. Attention to details. Attention to details. Get the edge as well, and then I'll go into the bowl. Now this I'm actually kind of treating more as actually putting the paint on, not so much dry brushing it, but being a lot heavier handed with it. And now I will go into the bowl. Into the bowl. I might, I'm de I've been debating, I might put a water effect in here to really capture the scrying thing. And I do have the Lejo's water effect sitting right over there. Not that you can see it, but it's over there, like five feet away. So I think I might put that in. Hey, Last Laugh, how you doing? Nice to see you in here today. Okay, so that takes care of the pedestal, which I wanted. Bring it down a little bit, but look at that. That's just so cool. So getting all those guys addressed with this. And while I have this mixed, I do want to get the We'll put the bookends on this. I think the bookends will do much better on this because they're not, they're smaller, but they also have a wider base. So I'll get the gargoyle bookends also highlighted up with the same paint mixture. It's so much easier to assembly line this type of thing rather than trying to do each one individually and then going back and doing the same thing over and over again. So these guys, they are we, but they have some fun details, which when you black them up like this with the primer, kind of gets lost so back in we go and I'm literally just treating these like stone bookends so what I'll do is I'm going to put this uh, mixture of the somber gray and the black on them let this dry I will do the 
Agrex as well, kind of give it the same wash treatment as the scrying bowl. And then I'll actually go back and do bone white on these guys instead of a tan highlight. But now, look at that adorable little face. Isn't that fun? But I'm just telling you guys what I plan on doing because this is stuff where obviously there's dry time in between, so it's harder to do like wash and then do on a live stream. Plus, I don't have four hours today. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, yeah, I know you can use the, uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want it to cloud up because it's got some really cool details in the bottom of the basin, which is why I'm going to use the water effects instead of just the usual hot glue like I'll default to. Um, because I want to be sure that doesn't cloud on me. Which is why I'll use that particular thing. But yeah, what I'll do is um, I'll take pictures of these guys once they're completely done and just fully explain the behind the scenes finishing that I give to them. And then that way for people who want to try and recreate this look, they know what was done between, well, these things, the live streams. So that you too can recreate and enjoy. There we go. Now you can see that that one, that was a dragon which was so hard to see before, but it's really cool. So that takes care of these guys. I say that, but of course I'm just looking a little bit more just to see, I might actually do a little more on him. No, no, he's good. I don't want to go too crazy. All right, so that takes care of the bookends. Is there anything else that needs this? Cause I still have some of this. Oh yes. The, uh, the crystal ball. I want to get the base with this. I forgot about that. Glad I looked. because this has some really neat engraving on it. And the crystal ball as well, I'm gonna use a color shift paint on it. And I know for sure I'm gonna use the uh, teal color shift from the uh, Ceram Coat Flash Metallic Lines, which you saw me use on the uh, Umber Hulk, which is the Scarab Beetle Hulk now. And that guy made an appearance on our table. I was just like, oh man, I, I created you and now you're attacking my PC. All right, so that gives it its stone base going. Let that take care of itself. And one more look, see, let me see. Is there anything else here? You know what, I'm gonna do this one too. There's this tiny little, um, I'm blanking on the actual word for it. Ceramic vessel, we'll call it. So I'm also gonna give this the gray treatment as I take off the little bottles. These little details are always fun though. Hold on. Let me get this opened up so I can put this guy on here. I forgot I had another batch that I could put to use. Oh, thank you, Jolene. Well, thank you for jumping in and hanging out with us. I appreciate that. I mean, really, I look forward to our Wednesdays together. I know it seems very simple, but it's fun to uh, touch base with you all, hear what you're up to, and catch you up on what I'm up to. Because I do enjoy it. And this guy will do the same thing. So it just got the whole gray factor going on it. But then I'll do the Agrax wash on it and then go in with the bone white for a little bit of extra highlighting to get this on the go and get it done. So that's the plan with these. So what I can do, are we on time? We're pretty decent. All right, so what I'll do is I'll do the washes. I just need to grab them, but they're that way. They're right behind me. So I'm going to grab these washes and I'll start putting it onto them so you can see what the wash does. Although, let me just get my brush cleaned up. Because I don't want to have paint drying on this one. This is one I'm actually really liking lately. Okay, so let me grab my Agrax. Ba -ba -da! As well as the Moon. That one always cracks me up. The Nuln oil. And remember, I have these lovely pot stabilizers. I, I don't want to say pot holders because that's a completely different object, but these help stabilize the washes. So I will start first with the Nuln oil, since I know that this one is pretty darn good. 
get this to pop off carefully. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quickly put this onto... Come on, where'd the other popsicle stick go? Did I move it? I may have. Yeah, we'll do this. Counterpoint. Still looking for a vintage Umbrella Hulk. Yeah, I know you were talking about that one. I'd love to see what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to put this upside down on purpose. And I'll start getting the Nuln on this dude. Then we'll jump over to Agrax on this dude. Which will be quite nice. And with uh, the washes, I do like to use this brush. I find this guy does a great job of distributing. It's a little crunchy right now, though, I think, because I didn't quite rinse it as well as I ought. Oops. But this is why I like these pots. It just keeps them from getting a little bit too uh, overdone. And I am going to go ham with this because this has so many nooks and crannies. So I'm going to be a lot more heavy-handed with the Nuln oil on the... This is also why I'm having it dry upside down. But this keeps it... So you still get those popped out details from doing the dry brushing, but it's not such a stark contrast. So we'll get this wash on and then I'll rinse my brush and jump over to Agrax for the others. It just helps to kind of dab it in there. Let me see if we have a good so that's, this is with the wash on this side, and that's without. So you can see how it has more of that brighter tone to it, but the wash brings it to more of a toned down look. And then really that's, that's all I'm going to be doing to this. I'm not going to go back in and do any further dry brushing or anything for the cauldron. I am just going to take care of the spell effect. That's bubble, bubble, toil and trouble for the clear. Um, and again, I'm just going to go in with a tiny little bit of nail polish remover to remove that one little fleck of black that got away from me. And then I'm going to do the, um, I think I'm going to use this one, this green to go in the spell effect area. I think it'll be a nice fit. Let's see. DM'd your first 5e game for people other than your family. Jolene, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, but still, you took that jump, which is wonderful. Congratulations on that one. And then let's see. <sighs> no, and Matt says this. Matt will say this. He says, you're not supposed to be like him. You're supposed to be yourself. Don't gauge yourself based upon the big names. It took them a while to get where they are. And you're going to find your own groove and your own style, which is important. You want it to be your style, not someone else's approximation as a DM. So don't stress yourself out that you're not like Matt. He doesn't expect you to be. No one expects you to be just like Matt. Thank you very much, Vincent. I appreciate that. Okay, this one I'm shaking for some reason my agraxes. They do tend to get a little separated. So I'm shaking this up a little bit. And then I'm going to take it to maybe. Oh, come on. This isn't a new bottle either. One moment, please. <laughs> this sucker is oh, stuck. There we go. Okay. <laughs> now I got my cardio in today. I kid. Uh, let's get this Agrex onto the other pieces that are more gray-based. I don't want to get the gnome going on them. But I wanted to get that brown undertone going because if you look at a lot of stone... It tends to have a brown quality as well. And again, I'm going ham on this. I know I'm going ham on it. But we'll get this wash on and then I'm going to let it dry. And this is the one that's going to get the tan highlight treatment. Again, from that same Vallejo line. Okay, that gets me around the base. And then I'll do the top portion, and then I'll move over to the gargoyles and the crystal ball. They'll get the same wash. And that was my stomach. I have got to remember to have a snack before I do these things. Because this, this new microphone, that, that probably just picked it up. <laughs> uh, oops. All right, we're going to call that guy a wash. And now for our gargoyles, which I love the expressions on their faces. It's just so fun. 
The dragon's very err. And these are the guys that are going to get the bone white highlighting. You stick. Instead of the tan. What do I love what washes can do? These are so small though. These are like bitty, bitty, bitty. Bitty, bitties. They'll show up a lot better when I get pictures going of them. Because then I can get the camera to really hone in on them. Yeah, but still, Jolene, I give you credit for just even doing it. Yes, Epic Dungeon, that was a very stubborn pot. Oh my gosh, I don't know why it was like that today. Like I said, it wasn't even a new bottle. It was just like, mm -mm, nope, you're live. I'm not going to agree to this. And again, I'm doing the Agrax on the earthen vessel. I think is what I was looking for. And these guys will all dry. And then I will take care of them and do a little bit more work with them. Oh, I totally make faces. Oh, and I have to do the crystal ball. Look into my crystal ball. Look into the future. Magic 8-Ball says... <laughs> so, yep, that just got the same wash as well, which trying to show to you is going to be impossible. So, that... Ooh, that was loud. You're an interesting fellow. Little bottle. So yeah, today we got the chair and desk completed, as well as the podium. We have the washes on our cauldron, and on our gargoyle bookends, and on our scrying bowl, and on our earthen vessel. And those will all get their dry brushing treatments. And all these I'm going to take pictures of, and I'll share them on my Facebook page, as well as uh, I'll put posts up on Twitter. And I'll, I'll break them down into two separate posts because we have the wood ones and then we have the cauldron and the stone-based ones. So I'll get those all lined up and ready to go. And then I did say, hold on, I gotta get them. They're over here, though. Pardon my reach. Come here, you. And then what I'm going to do next week, I'm excited for these guys. Um, oh, that was probably loud. You want a little bit of an ASMR? I forgot I still had them wrapped up. So these are... The mama and son crocodile people that I created for my homebrew. And Miguel created these minis for me. But this is the son. This is Calamus Catuaba. And he is the cook. And he has this massive ladle. The ladle actually is his weapon. I, I worked out a little thing for him. So I'm going to get him painted up. What I'm going to do is prime them first. So... He's going to make an appearance next week. We'll get them started. And this is Mama Mama. I do need to fix because she actually has a frying pan. But the top broke off in shipping, I think. So I have to get her frying pan top put back on. Fiddle with that this weekend. And then she's going to get painted up. And she is one I can't wait to do because Miguel actually put it in. So, oh, it's hard to see because of the clear print. But she has bunny slippers. <laughs> she's got a bathrobe. And she has curlers on the top as well you can see him right there so she's gonna be a fun one to paint up but it's uh this is camilla cat Tuaba, and uh they're a fun little npc mother and son that are in my bb's place and i had a lot of fun bringing them out uh last week on scratch channel so these guys are going to be our vips for next week courtesy of mz4250 find him on thingiverse and shapeways great 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 wonderful wonderful friend and creator so these are for next week. The others I will take pictures of as soon as they're done. You guys, as always, are fantastic. I love chatting with you. This has been wonderful. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Have a lovely weekend. I hope it's filled with lots of gaming, and if not, lots of crafting. Take care, everyone, and I will see you next week. So, bye! Maybe, maybe not. Ta-da!